mascots and literally they owned those mascots whereas Sega they had Sonic but they didn't really you know for all these sports games they always had to get some endorsement from a sports player and it was always like I don't know um, <clears throat> you know it was like a maiden game or the NBA thing with like a, a player on it like Michael Jordan or whatever it was always such and such his game and they always had to kind of go back in for the licensing of that stuff so that was always kind of the problems um, and in fact of all the mascots they ever made Nintendo there was only one that left them at the altar and um, that was when the PlayStation first come on the horizon and uh, would pose a huge threat to Nintendo in the fact that, um, of course, Final Fantasy um, originally was a Nintendo-only um, franchise. Like, they literally created them, but they would leave Nintendo uh, because of disk space, and they literally needed, like, to really get in as much as they could, they needed to join up with a CD kind of... Uh, idea of what playstation were putting out again music was better you could fit more on it so that's the way they went but if anybody else they've all they've all stayed there other than that um and of course moving along even further than that um but once playstation was out there that was a huge threat on the n64 um you know it was kind of like nintendo's last hope was what was called the gamecube which i still play time to time to this day uh, it's one of my sort of most favorite kind of consoles um, that i've had um, and the funny thing about the gamecube is just the look of it um is the fact that it had that little handle on it matt i don't know if you remember that <laughs> yeah, it's a bit bizarre, wasn't it? Like, who's going around there like a suitcase? Like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I almost feel like I look back at it, like when I when I heard about the switch, and I thought, I wonder if that's what they were trying to do back then, but in a, in their own kind of way before this had kind of hit off with the internet and playing online and stuff like that. But um, it certainly always had that that feel that they were trying to trying to go somewhere with it. But uh, yeah, I was a, I was a big GameCube fan. I know that many people didn't, but there was like a, certain games like i remember resident evil 4 i owned a um a playstation at the time and i remember uh i had the game on both consoles and how much better the resident evil 4 ran on the um gamecube than it did on the playstation i don't know why but it just looked better it was more crisp i don't know why that was um and yeah they were like tiny little cds as well very strange kind of things but literally that would be the end i feel of the you know the run for nintendo because again around this point microsoft got in the game uh, along with sony and of course they were making the xbox xbox 360 and you know they just could not compete so what did nintendo have to do they had to be a little bit more innovative they come out with a wii which wasn't altogether a, a you know sort of like your, your normal console of course it would drop its usual titles like mario galaxy was on there um we had twilight princess from zelda and of course mario kart games and stuff like that that were always uh, ever present but the wii was more tailored towards family play it was like pick these controllers up anybody can play them you don't have to be a gamer to play them if you're playing the wii sports you're literally just gonna you know play tennis it's not really that difficult you don't have to press so many buttons and i think they did a very good job at delivering something else where they would never be able to compete with the likes of PlayStation and the Xbox at the time. Um, and again, forwarding on to that, they went with the Wii U, which lifespan-wise, not really that long, um, to be fair. I think they had like a good four years, and that was it. Um, and they had this... Um, I had this controller with a screen in it, um, but there was some, you know, the biggest issues I always had with a Wii mat, and I'm sure you're the same, is batteries. It annoyed the hell out of me. I was like, why? What the hell is this? You know, God damn, I'd rather have leads. Um, that always annoyed me so much. The fact that I was having to like fork out for these rechargeable batteries and keep changing them, and you have to worry if they're charged up, and it was it was a nightmare, especially when I'm like trying to play like a link for a game like Zelda I'm like come on stop this um, just an absolute nightmare uh, for things like that uh, Matt did you um, play many sort of like titles like a Zelda game or a Mario game or you know any other sort of other than sort of the, the norm on the Wii like the sports and stuff like that did you ever play like a, a game game 
Uh, well, the good thing about the Wii as well was that the shooting games were really quite good on there yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you could use it in that sense as well. So I did used to play a lot of them, and like you said, the, the, the Resident Evil series, almost like it favoured Nintendo in some ways, because there was a lot of exclusives coming out for it on the, uh, on the Nintendo as well, like, like right. the Wii as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and it, yeah, it did seem that way. I'm not sure if, uh, why that was that Capcom did that, but to this day, they still um, have got a lot of their stuff on there. Like they've they've released things to this day, so it is is odd. Um, and again, um, now, funny enough, the story goes for this Nintendo Switch mat is um, a couple of years ago. I'm sure everybody's familiar with the app that was downloaded the fastest and most quickest in record time which was of course pokemon go matt um and uh <laughs> you'd be very hard pressed to find somebody that didn't have one i do know somebody that didn't have one our mutual friend didn't have one but <laughs> but uh, literally the world was playing pokemon go for a, you know i would say like for a good three weeks when I was, no matter where I was, if I was in London, um, if I was just like, just, just around where I live locally or I was sitting on a bus, like if I looked out the window, people, not just kids, just people would be looking down at their phones, going into bizarre places, looking around themselves, trying to find Pokemon. And it was very, very odd. Like I can't it, it just... To, to comprehend just how everybody got on that for a short time, even if somebody, because of the interest and word of mouth, just somebody would just download it and be like, yeah, I just want to see what the fuss is about. I'll have a quick go. But even that is still quite like crazy. Um, Matt, um, I'm sure you remember this time. Again, it's quite forgotten now. Things move on very fast. But Pokemon Go was like a very strange enigma, I guess, that we had the <laughs> that, that everybody got into at one time. Oh, no, yeah, it was a brilliant thing as well for the time as well because a lot of people loved that nostalgia. A lot of people grew up with Pokemon. Mm. So coming out like that in such an innovative way, uh, all the young people now like to download the apps and everything, the kids yeah. like that and they get the tablets. But then um, a lot of the uh, people who were making their commutes to work actually gave them something to do along yeah. with just a good time. Yeah, it's the whole, it was the whole thing about collecting, I think, that got people hooked even if you weren't a Pokemon fan. I think the idea of collecting and sort of upgrading all the time is just like, it works very, very well. And the fact that they, they Nintendo worked with the phone companies, I think they've done a very, very uh, decent job. Now, through that, stock rose incredibly over like a, a day. I mean, they went up, they shot up like huge. And Nintendo says to, you know, they come out and say, right, look, we're going to scrap what original idea we had, um, and we're literally going to build uh, a console. You know, we're going to be bringing this ahead of time. We're going to put it out quicker, and all the things we've wanted to do can now be done because we've got the money from Pokemon Go. Um, very, very strange, uh, all that, how that all come about. Um, since then, and before this was released, we had, uh, of course, um, what was it mario go and again that broke a record as well on um i know that did on for apple on its first release of downloads um and yeah very easy one thumb touching type platform game but you know very easy to play and that's what gets people hooked that it's not that difficult it's literally you can play it with one thumb bang done and again it's a nice little um it was a, a smart move by Nintendo to again hook up with these phone companies and uh, and get in with them uh, to to make even more money and they've done pretty well by doing that and it's uh, it will it's it will make things very interesting with a switch going forward as well I feel and uh, we'll talk about that more as we go on but here we are now and the release of course in 2017 was the Nintendo Switch um, that had everybody talking about what is it what does it do um how does it operate etc etc matt i'm gonna let you take over on this one now and let you uh, as as the person that is literally ordered this in but let me ask you first matt um the, the you know you've been playing like just so everybody knows from where you come from you're uh, kind of would you say you're an xbox guy for the last you know 10 years or what 
primary machine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've got a PlayStation 4 as well, but mm-hmm. yeah, primarily on the Xbox. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, just to give you a flavour, because, you know, often... Uh, I don't know why it is, but gamers, they, you know, they do tend to pick and stay loyal to certain consoles. And I get that. I'm like, a, have been on PlayStation, but then if anything, Nintendo comes out, I always get that as well. I would say Nintendo is probably my most favorite um, of the three, but it's probably more of a nostalgia um, than anything else. That's not to say the games are any better or anything like that. It's just the nostalgia of what Nintendo gives to you as the sort of, I mean, it is the last... It's funny to think, but since Sega's gone now from making consoles and only games and stuff like that, and of course um, that war had finished the moment I saw, what was it, Sonic, no, Mario and Sonic's Olympic Games. Uh, I thought, oh, well, that's that finished then. (laughs) Sonic's on a Wii, that's it, that's that gone. Um, But yeah, I mean, what's interesting is that, you know, Nintendo is the is the last sort of pure game company still around in existence to this day. And again, they are competing with some heavy duty mobs. I mean, Microsoft is a computer, <laughs> you know, it's everywhere. I mean, that stuff. So, and then you've got Sony who are all about electronics and, you know, they've got so much stuff as well with batteries and, you know, all the innovative stuff. So, you know, for Nintendo, they are competing up against, you know, the very best. But, um, you know, as we get into this, we'll see where that is and where I feel that that, that goes with it. But, Matt, i um, going to throw it over to you now um, and to, to put a few sort of obvious questions that come to your mind. And I'm sure there are people listening that uh, w- would ask the same thing. So I'll let you take over and I'll try and uh, answer as much as I can at the same time giving you um, some insight. Okay, well, the thing that springs out to me immediately is just just how accessible is this whole, like, you've got it docked, okay, and then mm-hmm. you're going to leave the house in quite a hurry, mm-hmm. so you just literally just pick that up and just walk out the door of it, is that right? Yes. Yeah, no I mean, you know what, when I first got this, um, this console, um, that is one of the first things I was a little bit like, how's that gonna work like i have no idea what it like i've seen the adverts but then i'm seeing people picking this up and i'm not seeing like is it as quick as what it's showing because you know what adverts like they are (laughs) they're not always real to to what goes on and i was like ah is this going to be a loading time can i can i be literally playing the game as it goes in this is this is how it works basically um when you know when you when you open your box for the first time and by the way um, there's nothing better than I, I'll say this much against all three other consoles that I have uh, and that I've seen. I can't speak for the Xbox One, but I'll say this against my PlayStation 4 and, and other consoles that I've opened is that whenever I open a Nintendo product, there's something very special about it. I don't know what it is, but I, I think the boxing, the packaging, the way they do it is. I know it's something really stupid and geeky, but it's probably the, the most exciting is to get a Nintendo product. Um, they do a very, very good job with stuff like that. Um, whereas I kind of feel like some of the other stuff has become more of like a, it's almost like a, a unit piece that I need to have like on my sort of entertainment sort of bits with my Blu-rays and stuff like that. Like there's so much other stuff going on with a PlayStation or Xbox, whereas, you know, this is all about the game and what you're going to be doing. So first and foremost, you get it, you're going to open that up, um, as Matt will be doing soon, and then for anybody else, you'll open it up, and what you'll get is like a dock. Now, I'll be honest, when I saw this dock, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> is this going to hold? It's like, it's plastic. I was thinking, okay, this is odd. I, I was expecting like the main bit to be in the dock, you know, like you think that's the stationary piece. That's going to be the one that holds all the, uh, you know, the main stuff on it. It's not. Literally, um, the dock is literally what it says. It is a dock. You get this, um, you get two wires, obviously, the HDMI lead and the plug lead. They fit in in the back of it. They fit in some some inserts. You shut it back up, um, so that's always hooked on your TV or wherever you want to take it or, or play or whatever. Um, so that sits there, and your switch which is the screen that everybody sees out there, which basically looks like a tablet um, unless the um, you know controls are on at each end. The switch literally is a screen, and at the bottom of that um, of it is literally a port for the um, HDMI. So literally, but not not the 
when I say that, it's it's the power pull, and, and literally it's like it's one thing. So you're not having to like put a bunch of wires in. You are docking this thing, and I'll say.